Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Joy and I'm the mom to six. I'm the wife of a missionary pilot and we live in the gorgeous country of Uganda. I am especially loving the weather today. It's slightly chilly so I even have on my sweater. And today we're gonna talk about five ways you can start living simple without getting overwhelmed because that is the thing that most of you are saying is you want to start living simple but you don't know where to start so let's talk about that and i'm also going to share with you four of my favorite channels well they're pretty much the only channels that i watch um, on youtube while i'm doing my afternoon chores after my rest i watch a video while i fold clothes or um, prep for dinner so let's get started first of all if, if you are new here I would invite you to like or subscribe down below. We talk about minimalism, simple living, giving generously, and living off of a very small income. And that is mainly what we talk about with an eternity focus and the focus on the gospel. So everything about living minimally or living simple to me doesn't mean much without a purpose behind it. And my purpose is the Lord Jesus Christ. And if that is not your purpose, you are still very welcome here. I would love to introduce you to him, but if that is not something you're interested in right now, I invite you still to stick around because we can be friends and we can hang out and we can talk about all things simple living. So here's five things that I would say, because I have not always been a simple liver. <laughs> if you go back and watch some of my videos, especially even while I've been a missionary and lived in very simple countries, when I would go back to the States, I would need to feel like I needed to stock up and buy all the things and hurry, 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 and take advantage and go shopping as much as I could to bring things back. Because we used to go, when we lived in Indonesia, we would go for three and a half years and then we would go back to the States for six months. And so when it was at six months, I kind of just went nuts. And my husband has always been like a saver. He's worn the same clothes for, you know, 17 years. He's not a minimalist, but he is very frugal and, and, but frugal in a wise way. Like he'll buy really nice things that will last a long time. Um, and then just use them until they literally wear out and then buy that same thing again. So he finds what he likes and he sticks with it. Whereas me, I've kind of been all over the place. So it's just been in the past four or five years that I've really embraced simple living. Um, I have culled a lot of our stuff, even though we live overseas and we have moved several times, we still manage to accumulate things. And so I have just steadily done with less and our, you know, my minimalist aesthetic isn't perhaps what you would see, um, you know, in especially in these like young 20 somethings minimalists who are like living the dream and having these very simple apartments or whatever. We have a big family, there's a lot of us and there's things that we need, but we have tried to limit what we bring into the house and our minimalism is mixed with frugality. So like this, <laughs> this blessed, I love this bed and but our daughter, when she first came to stay with us, picked the board off. And since it's kind of particle board, we had it made in Indonesia. We brought it over from Indonesia. Um, it needs to be stained. And my husband is very good about doing projects around the house. This one just hasn't quite happened yet. So we'll stain that at some point. But so my minimalist aesthetic isn't perhaps what you would see on a lot of other channels, especially because I'm not like a video editor. Um, you watch some of these channels and it's amazing. You want to live in a, you know, cottage in the woods or you want to live in a high rise apartment where, you know, just these very simple modern things. Actually, I've never really been a modern person, but like the simplicity of it is kind of enticing. So anyway, so a quilt, you know, if you've been around, you knew I made this quilt when we lived in Alaska. The only thing I could do was sit at home at seven do below when I was pregnant with Hannah. That was she'll be 19 so 19 year, 19 20 years ago and i made this quilt from you know by hand and with a machine and it, so it's just our minimalism i don't know which is more important to us frugality or minimalism but they're like they go hand in hand and i think if you aren't obsessed with having a certain aesthetic quote unquote minimalism and frugality go very well together because the less you need the less you need to buy Joshua Becker on his channel, I'll link that below, talks a lot about that. Like the less you need, 
the more money you have or the more brain space you have, you know, you don't have to work, work, work for the things because you don't need anything. And so that's really what our minimalism is about. So if that's what you're interested in, let's talk about five ways to get started living simply. And that living simply to me means living frugally, spending less, and also like living simply doesn't mean easier. It means less rush, less stuff, less chasing after the next big thing. So my first tip would be, if you have never started making a meal plan, come up with a very simple one for the next week. So maybe Thursday, if you can, come up with a list of five to six meals that you wanna cook or that you wanna buy, if you're not somebody who cooks, that you wanna buy from the grocery store. And then add in a veg and a salad and, and your starch or rice or whatever needs to go with your meal. And then just write it all down and then make your grocery list from that. So that's the first tip, make a menu plan, but make it really simple, especially when you're starting. And if you're not ready to do a full week, try planning two meals for next week and try making double. And then see if your family will eat it again, either for lunch or see if they'll eat it for another dinner if you warm it up or make it different. You know, you could have beans and rice one night and then the next night you could have like bean and cheese tortillas, you know, like a burrito bar kind of situation. So there's options. Just give it a try, start there and start slow. Don't get overwhelmed. And so take out three recipes, two recipes, whatever it is you feel comfortable with. Look at them, see what those recipes need and then just write it on your list. Go from the list and check in your pantry. Say, okay, I have salt, I don't need to buy salt this week or I don't have beans already, I don't need to buy those. And then turn, you know, check off the things that you don't need and then you'll have your list. And then the second tip would be to create an easy, like mindless, no-brainer breakfast for your family. For us, we have three breakfasts that we have during the week. It is smoothies, which I make the morning of. I freeze all of our bananas that come off of our trees. I cut them up, I freeze them, and then I add whatever veg <laughs> or fruit we have in, and I have, and I add peanut butter. So I have like the formula, like the basic formula. It's, um, you know, a good bit of fruit, some milk, almond milk, or oat milk or regular milk, a little bit of water. So your, and if your fruit is not frozen, then you need to add ice and some peanut butter for your protein, fat, and then um, chia seeds or flax seeds if I have them, and then some vanilla and some cinnamon, and then I mix it up. The boys love it, especially if you have banana in there. It just makes it smooth and creamy. You can add some cocoa powder in there or cacao nibs, things like that, but start with the base. Start with smoothies. The other thing we make is baked oatmeal. I will leave the recipe below. It's not especially healthy, but I figure it's way healthier than buying packaged cereal, which we don't buy, but if we did, it would be you know, better than that. The other thing that I make is a bread. It's, a, it's technically called strawberry bread, and I'm actually not sure where the recipe came from, but my friend in Indonesia gave me some of this bread and I loved it so much that I needed the recipe. So basically, um, it's a very simple one bowl, like a banana bread kind of an idea, except you can put in whatever fruit you want. So I do pineapple today, it's actually baking right now, it's raspberry bread because I had some of those given to me. Often it's banana bread, but instead of mashing them, I slice the bananas. Honestly, every person that eats this bread asks for the recipe. It is not healthy but it is hearty and it keeps my boys full, especially if they have it with um, the smoothie, which then I feel like they're getting their greens and their um, fiber and all of that. And then they can have a little bit of a less healthy um, banana bread, raspberry bread, strawberry bread, strawberry bread, whatever you wanna call it. So I will leave that recipe down below as well. So those are my first three, two, three, three, two, two. Okay, number three is to take stock of where your money is going. So just keep track 
this is before budget. This is before you try to start saving or you try to start living um, more simply. Just look at where your money is going because often when you write every single thing down, you find that you're spending a lot more money in areas that you didn't even realize, whether that is just running up to the store to grab something quick or not having a meal planned so then you grab something from the grocery store or the fast food place which there's nothing wrong with these things but if your goal is to live simply and then to save money as a result of that then you want to be mindful of where your money is going and that's the other thing number four have an easy 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 meal on hand whether that is canned goods frozen or something in your fridge or freezer in your pantry somewhere that you know that no matter what happens in the day that you can whip together that meal in 20 minutes 30 minutes for me it's my crock crock pot mexican i keep a stash of tortilla chips that we make i keep them um, hidden so they don't get eaten and then i know that i can dump everything that i need into my crock pot to make a mexican dish i have a video where i list the recipe i will link it down below that is the like we got stuck at school we got stuck in traffic whatever i can dump it all in and it, i say crock pot but it doesn't need to be in the crock pot so i can just make it on the stove or i can throw it in in the morning if i know that i'm going to have a busy day either way it comes out the same it's really good it just you just need some basic things you can have meat or not meat you can have beans whatever kind of beans you want. So it's a very simple meal and everybody loves it and then they can just kind of stack it how they want. So that is um, tip number four. Number five is, and probably should have been the first one, and I think I've said this before, but wake up every single day and list what you are grateful for. Not what you wish you had, not what you want, not what you desire, but the things that you are grateful for right now. This has changed me. I come into my morning time with the Lord every morning and I thank him for whatever it is. And often, often it is the sunrise, coffee, quiet time, reading, nature. Like it is often the same things over and over again. And then I will go into, you know, being thankful for my family, being thankful for friendships or different things that had happened the day before. So, but often it starts with coffee, sunrise, nature, you know, quiet time and books. That is kind of the same things I'm grateful for every day. So I encourage you to start as a gratitude practice because I don't think we realize how many blessings we have been given, even if we're going through a really difficult time, which I know a lot of you have been going through a difficult time. Um, the more that we look outside of ourselves and see what God has blessed us with, all the little things to the big things. Right now we have 14 rabbits running around our garden. Um, and no, I don't think we're gonna eat them, okay? Everybody keeps asking me, when are you gonna eat these rabbits? I know it's probably not smart to just have a food source and not use it, but they're so cute. You know, when we had chickens, I had no problem like, whacking their heads off and you know plucking them and chopping them up I really didn't sorry if that's not nice to hear <laughs> but rabbits I don't know they're so adorable and we eat very little meat so I don't know that we we don't need the rabbit source of protein or meat at this point anyway I love seeing the rabbits every day they're hopping around they're jumping they're skipping around and they're really happy because they're free they roam free in our yard garden and so that's something that brings me happiness every single day. So, I don't know how to make a short video. It's just gonna be this way from now on, you guys. I'm gonna tell you my four favorite channels right now that I um, basically am kind of addicted to, but I love watching them. So my first one, her name is Mayo Utuk. I will leave the link below, but she is a lovely single lady in Nigeria who is teaching in a rural setting. Hang on, I need to grab a drink of water. And her videos are incredible. I absolutely love watching her. Every time a new video comes out, I'm so excited. She lives very simply, but she's living very mindfully and um, is just so content and happy with what she's been given. I really encourage you to go down, subscribe, 
tell her that I can't that I sent you over there because I think you know she's kind of a newer channel and I think she could really use the encouragement um, okay and then number two probably comes as no surprise I used to watch her all the time then she left and now she's back but it's Kate from she's drinking coffee so it's she's drinking coffee now instead of coffee with Kate um, I she isn't she doesn't know me but I feel like we're best friends because she just sits down and has these long chatty chats about life and frugality and real honest living there's nothing fancy about her videos and I think that's why I love it it's because that's what I crave from other people is real life I want to know people in real life I don't want to just watch something that they've curated for me I want to watch something that they are talking to me as a friend so that's why I feel like with Kate she's absolutely lovely we don't agree on everything like spiritually and that's totally okay with me I don't have to agree with every single person that I watch and she would say the same thing. So I love watching Kate. Um, yeah, she's just hilarious and so fun. Number three is Frugal Joe. I will also, I'll leave all these down below, but Frugal Joe is living on like a tiny budget. Trying to, They're trying to save up a down payment so that they can buy a home. She is American, but lives in the UK with her family and her tips, tricks, her positive attitude, her willingness to do whatever it takes to, um, make their dream of buying a home happen. Um, I'm really impressed with how, yeah, her outlook and I love seeing people that are willing to do what it takes to really be financially secure. So I love Frugal Joe. And then the last one is new. Her name is Bethany Lynn. And like I, I think I watched her first video and I commented, I was like, oh my goodness, I found a kindred. Um, they. They, she homeschools and she lives in the woods and she lives very simply. When I watched her minimalist wardrobe, I was like, how have I not been friends with this girl my whole life? Because, you know, I love minimalist wardrobes. So um, she's very good at her videos. She's very um, encouraging, but she's just good at um, editing and um, kind of talking in the background, like talking over some really beautiful scenery from the area that she lives and her house is really adorable. I love it. Um, that would be my ideal minimalist, simple house. Alas, I have this big, clunky, old, weird house that I have somehow fallen in love with over the last seven years. And so I don't have that tiny little cute cottage but I have a big old clunker. <laughs> but we, I think when you make memories in a home, it just becomes so special. So this is where we live and we've lived here for seven years now and there's so many memories within these falling apart walls. <laughs> so I can't complain, I'm thrilled. But her house is adorable, it's very simple, I love it. So please go check them out. And leave me a comment, how do you make simple living a reality in your life? Or do you, do you want to? Um, what kinds of things are you doing in your life to keep life simple, keep life slow, dare I say, and just focus on um, the present and what matters in life? Um, I wanna say thank you to everybody who reached out and asked how they could help for school for children around here. Um, I will say this, I'm going to set up a GoFundMe because so many of you want to help out. I really appreciate that. Um, I wish that I had a proper NGO so that you could send it through um, and then you could see where your money was going. But here's the thing, if you decide that you want to give towards somebody going to school, I will personally write you back from that donation and tell you exactly who it is going to and exactly how much it's of your money is going to that person because depending on how much you give, I might put two of you together for one child or maybe you could you know, send two or three kids to school. It doesn't, so I will let you know and if it's appropriate, if there's somebody that I know well and they're fine with it, then I will take a photo for you. Um, I wanna be very respectful and honoring of my friends and not treat them as though they're a project. This is really um, the body of Christ coming together to uplift each other and I don't want anybody to feel like they are a project or that they are 
um, less than, if that makes sense. So I will be careful about that, but I will put the GoFundMe down in the description box. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a great week. I made bread this morning. I made the raspberry bread and regular bread, um, just a Amish white bread. Again, not super healthy, but I find my whole wheat bread doesn't get eaten as quickly as my regular white bread, and it's really cheap and inexpensive to make. Um, and so I did those this morning. I cut up a papaya. I'm gonna put a picture of the papaya, and then I'll put some footage of the rabbits here at the end so you can see them too. Sonia says thank you to everybody who said hi after her little greeting last week and those of you who said her singing was wonderful. She's very happy. I read her all the comments and we are still working on answering the comments so hang in there and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Don't forget to like or subscribe, hit the bell, all the things and leave me a comment below so that we can continue the conversation. I did leave my um, email last week. I will leave my email again. So many of you have emailed me and I really like that medium because then I feel like we're exchanging conversation rather than just, you know, like a DM on Instagram before. Like I didn't, I felt, I got overwhelmed. But emails, I feel like we can actually become friends. So feel free to email me. It might take me a while, like, cause I do want to be present with my family and I have taken on some reasons other responsibilities here in um, Uganda, but I will answer you at, <laughs> at some point, I will answer you. And I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you next time. And yeah, God bless you. Bye. Here's another hole that the boys made out of a bucket. And this one can't go any back, back any farther. And unfortunately, although I've seen them go into this one a lot, there's no bunnies in this one.